Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today I will be presenting part 6 which will conclude John's experiences as a Sasquatch contactee, telepathic words. If you have not seen the first 5 parts, I highly recommend you watch them first. Ok, let's get started. If you've been enjoying my content, why not take a quick second to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss out on the latest episode and you will be joining a community of like-minded individuals who share your interests. Let's keep this journey going together. Thank you for your support. If you have an encounter story that you would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's episode. Kamu, Elder Sasquatch, voice heard February 2018. We have something for your people. Before the burning of the Library of Alexandria, select ancient scrolls were taken in an attempt to save them. Egyptians took those ancient scrolls to the Americas. Eventually, a colony of Egyptians made it to the Grand Canyon. At one point, there was a meeting between the Egyptians and my people. Those ancient scrolls were given to us to keep safe. We, Sasquatch, took the scrolls to the caves in Nova Scotia, then later to caves in Ontario. There is an ongoing debate and controversy among historians and archaeologists about whether the ancient Egyptians visited the Americas before Columbus. There are some intriguing similarities and findings, such as the cocaine mummies and cultural parallels and G.E. Kincaid's account. G.E. Kincaid is a controversial figure known for his claims of discovering ancient Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon, Arizona, USA. In 1909, Kincaid, an amateur archaeologist and explorer, announced that he has discovered a series of ancient Egyptian tunnels and artifacts in the Grand Canyon, including a hidden chamber containing Egyptian relics and hieroglyphics. Kincaid's story remains a popular topic among enthusiasts of alternative history and conspiracy theories. In the 1920s, a German toxicologist named Silvana Balabanova discovered traces of cocaine and nicotine in the hair samples of several ancient Egyptian mummies, including Ramses II and Hatshepsut. This finding was surprising as cocaine is derived from the coca plant which is native to South America, and it was believed to have been unknown in ancient Egypt. The discovery sparked debate amongst researchers, with some suggesting that there may have been trade routes of cultural exchange between ancient Egypt and the Americas. Regardless, the discovery remains a fascinating area of study offering insight into the lives and practices of ancient cultures and the possibility of early global connections. Additionally, ancient Egypt and South American cultures such as the Mayan, Inca and Aztecs share some fascinating similarities despite being geographically and chronologically distant. Here are some examples. 1. Pyramid Structures all four cultures built pyramid-like structures, often with ceremonial and religious significance. Egypt's pyramids are famous, while Mesoamerica has a Mayan pyramid, Incas, Sacsayhuaman, and Aztecs, Templo Mayor. 2. Solar Worship Each culture revered the sun as a central deity or symbol often associating it with life, fertility, and power. 3. Calendars and Astronomy All four cultures develop sophisticated calendars, tracking celestial movements and identifying astronomical events like solar eclipse and planetary alignments. 4. Human Sacrifice Unfortunately, human sacrifice was practiced in all four cultures often to appease gods, ensure fertility, or accompany important rituals. 
Five, mummification. Egyptians are famous for mummifying their dead, but the Incas and Aztecs also practice mummification, albeit less extensively. Six, hierarchical societies. Each culture has a strict social hierarchy with rulers, nobles, and commoners, often with significant divisions between classes. 7. Symbolic Art and Iconography Similar symbols and motifs appear in the art and iconography of these cultures, such as the use of serpents, eagles, and jaguars. 8. Cosmological Beliefs All four cultures believed in multiple realms or dimensions, often with the connection between the natural and spiritual worlds. 9. Rituals and Ceremonies Each culture had elaborate rituals and ceremonies to mark important events, like births, death, and agricultural cycles. 10. Mathematical Achievements the Egyptians, Mayans, Incas, and Aztecs all made significant contribution to mathematics, particularly in astronomy and architecture. G.E. Kincaid's account is not widely accepted as credible, and most experts consider it to be a hoax. The cocaine mummies have been explained by other factors, such as trade networks and contamination. The cultural similarities between Ancient Egypt and South America cultures have been attributed to independent development. Finding ancient Egyptian artifacts in the Americas would be a groundbreaking discovery, challenging our cultural understanding of history and cultural exchange. It would be suggested that ancient Egyptians had contact or influence in the Americas, which would be a significant departure from the conventional narrative of ancient America civilization developing in isolation. Such a discovery would raise questions about the extent of ancient Egyptian exploration and trade, and whether they had presence in the Americas before Columbus. Additionally, it would also provide valuable insight into the cultural and technological exchange between ancient civilization and potentially shed light on the development of writing systems, architecture, and religious beliefs in the Americas. The discovery of the ancient Egyptian artifacts in the Americas would be a testament in the ingenuity and seafaring ability of the ancient cultures, and would likely spark a significant revelation of our understanding of human history. If Sasquatch were found to be in possession of ancient Egyptian scrolls, it would be a groundbreaking discovery with significant implications of our understanding of human history and the natural world. It would suggest that Sasquatch has been interacting with humans for thousands of years and have been collecting and preserving artifacts from ancient human civilizations. This discovery would challenge our current understanding of the timelines of human history and the development of civilization. It would also raise questions about the cognitive abilities and cultural practices of Sasquatch and whether they have been observing and learning from humans for centuries. Furthermore, the presence of ancient human artifacts in Sasquatch possessions would also raise questions about the ethics of human interactions with the natural world and the treatment of indigenous species. It would highlight the importance of respecting and preserving the cultural heritage of all beings. Overall, the significance of Sasquatch holding and keeping human ancient artifacts would be a profound and thought-provoking discovery, with far-reaching implications for our understanding of the natural world and our place within it. Marriage is good human custom. Camus Elder Sasquatch, Voice Heard, April 2018 Sasquatch might adopt its own version of marriage, perhaps with some unique twists. They might choose to form long-term peer bonds, similar to humans, but with their own rituals and traditions. Perhaps Sasquatch couples would exchange vows in a sacred forest clearing, 
surrounded by towering trees and the sounds of nature. They might wear garlands of leaves and vines, and their ceremonies would include rituals like the sharing of berries or the performance of traditional Sasquatch dances. Sasquatch couples might prepare for their special day by gathering rare fragrant herbs and flowers from the forest floor. They would weave these into beautiful garlands adorning themselves and their beloved with their sweet scented tokens of their love. Their ceremonies might take place at dawn or dusk when the forest is bathed in a golden light and the air is filled with the songs of birds and the gentle rustling of leaves. The Sasquatch would gather around the couple, forming a circle of support and community as they exchange vows of promises to one another. Their vows might include commitments to protect and care for the forest, to respect and honor the land and its creatures, and to nurture their love and family with kindness, patience, and understanding. As they seal their union, the Sasquatch couple might share a tender moment touching foreheads or entwining their fingers, symbolizing their deep connection and unity. After the ceremony, the community would come together to celebrate with feasting, singing, and dancing, honoring the love and commitment of the newly bonded pair. Sasquatch marriage would be a beautiful, heartwarming celebration of love, nature, and community, a true reflection of their deep connection to the natural world and their place within it. I want to human wives. Roshanti, Young Sasquatch, Voice Heard, April 2018 In Sasquatch culture, polygamy might be an accepted practice and they may view human women as desirable partners. This could indicate a patriarchal society where males hold significant power and influence. In a more biological sense, Sasquatch might be seeking to diversify their gene pool by interbreeding with humans. This could be a survival strategy to ensure a long-term viability of their species. When the time comes to speak about my heart, I will only feel trusted when you listen. Roshanti, Young Sasquatch, Voice Heard, April 2018 Other Telepathic Words Wake up, write, sit up straight, do push-ups and jumping jacks. Keep it in your pants. Go sit quiet. We want to talk. I am here. Speak out loud. Ask questions out loud. You are from Arcturus. One time wonder. You do the same things when you're sober. What are you going to do about your teeth? Don't cut your hair. You are not ready. Go to the colorful flags. Ask for Rick. He knows us. We are here. We have bases. Don't act in fear. Does anyone know how to heal a liver? You won't have kids in this life. You know enough about Bitcoin. Stop smoking. John, can you hear me? Stop smoking. Please stop smoking. Give it up. We will retreat now. Conclusion In 2018, after the whispers of We Will Retreat Now echoed through my mind, the telepathic voices fell silent. The vivid visions that once danced before my eyes faded, and my dreams returned to their gentle slumber. But before this eerie calm, a sense of unease had settled over me like a shroud. I felt like weight of unseen eyes upon me, as if I was being stalked. At work, my parents' house, and in my sanctuary, the local park, I sensed the presence lurking, and I noticed being followed by what looked to be undercover police. Some had walkie-talkies. Then one day, a stranger's gaze pierced a veil of my privacy as I saw a man sat in a van down the road with binoculars fixed on my home. I witnessed this from the upstairs window. This put me on edge and I stayed with my parents that night. Although the air was still heavy with an unspoken threat, 
as I then witnessed someone creep up from the darkness that night, snatching our black garbage bag like a thief in the night, putting it in their car and driving off. I knew then that I was under surveillance and my family's safety could be at risk. But when I spoke of my fears, my loved ones dismissed my concerns, believing the whispers in my mind and shadows that followed me were symptoms of a fractured psyche and mental illness. And so, long short story, a couple of years later I was taken away and voluntarily committed to a sterile hall of a psych ward. My autonomy and consent stripped away from me like a shroud. The doctor's diagnosis and prognosis were forced upon me, and I was subjected to the cold embrace of antipsychotic medication, a monthly injection that courses through my veins like a river of numbness. The community treatment order hangs over me, threatening to summon the authorities if I miss a single dose. My journey now has been a labyrinth of pain and confusion. As the profound vision and dreams that once illuminated my path were reduced to mere symptoms of a brain disease. The label of schizoaffective disorder and psychosis now follows me like a shadow, a constant reminder of the fragility of a human mind. Yet, I know that I was not hallucinating. The binocular incident, the stolen garbage bag, and the following were all too real. The voices, visions, and profound dreams were a testament to the wonder that lurks just beyond the edge of our perception. And so, I cry out for revolution in mental health care, a new dawn of understanding and compassion, where the shackles of outdated treatments are cast aside, and a new hope arises like a phoenix from the ashes. May the future be bright and may our minds be freed from the chains of impossibility, ignorance, and fear. This concludes John's series of experiences of a Sasquatch contactee. Wow, I was not expecting this ending. I read parts of his encounter before, but for the most part, I read through this one time with you all. John, I was going to send you an email prior asking if you still had experiences, but this ending answers my question. Thank you so much for taking the time and sending this in to us, and I hope you are doing well. Thank you, John. Now to acknowledge the current OC members. I would like to thank Elizabeth, Jim, Diana, and Teresa for their contribution and support as members of the OC community. Your support is truly appreciated. If you wish to learn more about our OC membership program, you can check out the membership video to get a detailed description of all the perks you will receive. Don't miss out on the adventure. Become a member now and join us today. If these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had, then please forward them to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I will be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit that like button on your way out and smash the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Have a wonderful weekend and I hope to see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.